So like just about every socially anxious 20-something who's been recently trying to escape the realities of the adult world and retreat back into the simple pleasures of childhood, I have been playing a lot of Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing Wild World was actually the first game I ever played on my Nintendo DS Lite. I would like play it at dinner, I would play it in my room once I found out that I could lie to my mom about going to sleep and just stay up playing my Nintendo DS. Tragically, I sold my DS a long time ago. Um, I would have loved to do like a retro Nintendogs, Pokemon Diamond, Animal Crossing Wild Worlds tour, but some rando from eBay now owns all of my games. But a couple months ago, I got myself a Switch and the new Animal Crossing. And um, let me tell you, I was obsessed with this game for a couple months. Eventually I reached a point that I didn't even really enjoy it anymore. I was just like chopping trees over and over again for three hours in order to pay off my house debt to a monopolistic raccoon with a dad bod, feeling bad about myself because my island didn't live up to the perfect five-star islands that took over my Instagram algorithm. Which, side note, I think it's hilarious how literally in a video game that's supposed to be relaxing, we've still somehow managed to recreate unrealistic beauty standards. Eventually I ended up paying off all of my debts and reaching the maximum house size, and then I kind of lost the plot line of the game. Because what's the point of life if there aren't greater material possessions to consume and then spend years paying off debt for? Am I right, ladies? So anyhow, my Animal Crossing Island is not the most perfect. Right now I have a four-star rating because Isabel is kind of a hard ass. Isabel really said no to grade inflation, and also because I need to have a bunch of fruit trees for uh, money purposes on my island, and I refuse to just replace them with other objects. But I think I did some cool things with it, so let's check it out. Also, if you're like actually a child who was just searching for Animal Crossing tours and came across this video, please don't watch this. There's a lot of adult language and references. So yeah, click on another video and come back here in like 10 years when you're a grown up. But I hope you find the Animal Crossing tour you're looking for and you're very cool. Animal Crossing is a great game. I hope you enjoy your childhood. Okay, hello and welcome to my slightly mediocre Animal Crossing island named Toasty. By the way, I tried to match my Animal Crossing character's outfit. So first off, I thought I'd show you around my house because honestly my house looks a lot better than my island. Um, and oh, would you look at that? My house has cockroaches. So it's just like my apartment in real life. You guys know I got like one cockroach in my apartment, but I heard an even more horrifying story from my friend who lives a couple blocks away. He said that <laughs> he was drinking his coffee and he looked at the bottom of the mug and there was just a huge cockroach sitting there. Anyway, so I'm not going over to his place anymore. If that happened to me, I would just throw my body in the trash. It makes me feel grateful for my one cockroach that was on the floor and not in my dishware. Wow. Hashtag blessed. Anyhow, here is the hallway area. It's kind of awkward to decorate because it's such a large space and it has all these doors, but I really liked how the cherry blossoms floated down on this wallpaper. So I kind of just built around that, went for kind of a white theme, popped some fountain in there. I don't know. Upstairs we have my bedroom, which is kind of just a virtual version of my real life bedroom. There's a lot of light green, pink floral themes, kind of a weird amount of wallpaper. Although I can only dream in real life about having molding that's this cool on the walls. Since this room is so big, I try to split it up with like a couple different rug areas and corner themes. I have a dressing corner. I have this kind of like chillin' guitar playing corner. I have a little artsy area and a bed with like a bunch of crap by the bed, which I guess is accurate to my real life bedroom. And of course this absolute fucking unit of a stuffed animal. Back downstairs and off to the left, I put together this little sitting room that honestly is my favorite room in the house. I really like how this like rug, all the dark wood came together. Obviously the obscene amount of plants. I think I stacked about every single potted plant I have in the game back here. Over to the left, we have this music slash recreation slash billiards room slash room that just holds a bunch of random objects that are a similar color scheme so they look nice together. I am such a hoe for herringbone wood flooring. And I desperately want it in my own apartment, but since I can't change out the floors, obviously, I've just been projecting onto Animal Crossing. And then to the back, would you guess it, it's a kitchen that is in the same color scheme and has all the same furniture as my other two rooms. For some reason, my Timmy and Tommy just refuse to sell me new items. So every single time I go to the store, it's like the same set of furniture items that I've gotten before. I've logged in for like weeks at a time and just never gotten anything new. Timmy and Tommy will just not sell me any of the actual kitchen furniture. So all of my counters here are dressers that have been turned around. This table is two lecture hall desks that I combined. It kind of gives me ye olde Game of Thrones 
Thrones vibes. Like somebody's gonna get murdered at a wedding or like fuck their sister in this room. Boo. And then downstairs, I cannot believe, by the way, in this game, they make you pay like two million bells to get just a basement. But I guess in Animal Crossing, much like real life, when you get super fucking rich, money doesn't really matter anymore and you just are trying to find something to spend it on. If only Animal Crossing had a little mini game for tax evasion, then I think we could capture the full experience. Anyhow, as you can probably tell, I really recently upgraded my house, so I don't have a whole lot of stuff in here yet. I was trying to find the right items to turn it into like a Fifty Shades of Grey sex dungeon, but it turns out for some reason in this game made for like 12 year olds, they don't have a whole lot of BDSM themed objects. So I'm filing a formal complaint with Nintendo, but in the meantime, it kind of just looks like this. Now to the great outdoors. One of my favorite new features of New Horizons is the fact that you can customize your house. I absolutely love how my house looks. Um, as you can tell, I use this game a lot to kind of like project my dreams for homeownership into a video game. So if I did buy a house, this is what I want it to look like. Um, just baby blue, cottage core vibes. Much like in real life, I also uh, constantly have an inbox of texts that have gone unread, mostly from my mom. Um, yeah, one day I'll clean out my mailbox, but not today. So let's start over yonder, over the bridge. I've been watching a lot of Fargo recently, so I've been practicing my Minnesotan accent. Oh yeah. That's the only thing I can say. I can say, oh yeah. <laughs> And that's it. Here I made a path out of alternating colored hearts. When I was deep in the Animal Crossing Instagram algorithm, I saw all of these super cool path patterns online. But in order to borrow other people's patterns, you need to pay like $5 a month to Nintendo in order to like use the Wi-Fi features. Not in this economy, no sir. Although maybe in this stock market, because apparently the stock market has become completely detached from real life. Also, I kind of have a moral objection to in-game app purchases because uh, fuck you, I paid for the game. I'm not gonna pay you more money. <laughs> I tried to get creative with the free patterns that came with the game and create, you know, a little checkerboard, these little hearts. Um, I don't really know what the point of all these fucking hedges are. I was just trying to use up space on my island because this island is so fucking big. To the left, I am preparing for Christian Girl Autumn with this pumpkin patch. Honestly, like every single year I get more and more of an autumn hoe and don't even get me started on fall fashion. Just you wait till I pull out my blazers. It's all over for you bitches. Anyhow, here's my pumpkin patch. I've been pretty much buying every single like spooky Halloween themed item from the store possible. So I put this random giant pumpkin table over here uh, cause I didn't know where else to put it. Back over to the right through this bamboo forest, we have a little Chinese restaurant. And this was actually inspired by Lynn on YouTube. She made a little dim sum restaurant that looked like this. She even made a menu and used a podium as a little hostess stand, which I thought was the cutest thing. Dim sum and bao in particular have always been my favorite food. My hometown growing up didn't have a dim sum place. So once per year, my parents would take me to this like child study at Johns Hopkins where we got paid like $50 for me to answer like three hours worth of questionnaires about um, like my drug usage and sexual activity, which were all like non-existent at the time. And we did that like every single year for my entire childhood. I remember there was this one question in the study that was, have you had oral sex in the past year? But when I was in high school, I didn't actually know what oral sex was. I thought it was just like kissing on the mouth. Cause I guess I was like, that's sexual and it's oral. <laughs> so when I was 16, I wrote like a question mark. Like I kissed somebody on the mouth if that counts. <laughs> so I'm sure the research assistants had a good laugh at that one. Anyhow, um, yeah, I had to do this like weird child study thing. And then afterwards as a treat, my parents would use the money that we got from the study and we would go out to dim sum in Baltimore. And um, it made kind of the invasive questions about my life as a child worth it. In retrospect, I realized the story kind of makes it sound like my parents secretly sent me to therapy as a child, but I swear it was like actually just this longitudinal study of like child growth and development. <laughs> Anyway, just niche Ashley's childhood things. Okay, if we go up this ramp, here I made another little room. Basically, in Animal Crossing, I don't actually really understand how you're supposed to decorate outdoors. So I mostly just resort to like building little fenced in areas and decorating them as if they were a house. So here I put together this kind of like bondage themed bedroom. <laughs> That's the only thing that these beds with bedposts remind me of. I'm like, mm, y'all are into some kinky shit. To the left beyond this little outcropping, we have my two Animal Crossing boyfriends' houses. <laughs> this house belongs to Jacques, who is this pretentious little French hipster bird who reminds me of the hipster boys in Silver Lake who used to nag me. I'm honestly so impressed with how accurately the Animal Crossing designers have captured this type of personality. Like Jacques does not say hi, he says, Hey, Jock wouldn't call himself sexist, but he does say you're not like other girls and you're actually kind of cool. 
And then over here we have an absolute sweetheart, real Animal Crossing hubby material. This is Sturb. As far as I can tell, all he does is sleep, eat donuts, and look fucking adorable, but that's okay with me. He calls me Burrito, which I think is very sweet. Um, yes, we are getting married in the spring. Out front, I made this recreation of the LACMA lampposts. I love how they look at night, and they're perfect for taking outfit pics for my Animal Crossing character's budding Instagram career. As I mentioned before, I pretty much only know how to decorate the outside by creating little rooms. So I kind of created this wall of trees around this cabin area, put together a bunch of cozy furniture, a fireplace, some books to read, some armchairs to smoke a cigar in, drink some whiskey, talk about collecting mafia money, you know, that type of stuff. And to the right, there is this little heart-shaped lake, which actually I didn't make myself. My island just came with a perfectly heart-shaped lake. And that is really just um, the beauty of mother nature. Back down this ramp, this is kind of back where we started. I kind of just have some wild territory of trees. Honestly, I kind of like leaving parts of my island undeveloped because from like an economic standpoint, you're able to earn so much money off of foreign fruit that every couple days I can just shake all the trees on my island, get a couple hundred thousand bells, and be well on my way to paying for the randomly overpriced things in this game. This is back where we started at my house, and now let's explore the right side of the island. Now, this part of the island is where things start kind of going downhill and getting just like really fucking random. I kind of ran out of ideas at this point and got kind of fed up playing this fucking game. I started having sex again, so then I didn't feel the need to take out all of my sexual frustration on a cartoon animal game. Over here, I put together a little concert hall. So I have some instruments up there, and then I put together a bunch of lecture seating to create a little auditorium. Here's the main downtown plaza area. Um, just like a shit ton of flowers for no particular reason. I saw somebody on Instagram stack together all of these different electronics on different levels in their town, and it looked like fucking Tokyo. It was so cool. But for some reason, when I do it, it just looks like a fucking Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> okay, if we head downwards, I have this little pe 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 picnic area. <laughs> Over here, we have a couple villagers' houses. Now, let me tell you about these villagers. I have been trying to get rid of them since April. I watched all these videos online for how to get rid of your villagers, and one of them said if you just build a fence all the way around their house and trap them there so they literally can't talk to anyone, go out and do anything, um, basically just like real life quarantine, then eventually they'll get fed up and move. But these fucking animals are quarantine queens. They have been completely alone for April, May, June, July, August. September, October, seven months. Yeah, they're, they're a work in progress. I'm slowly trying to break them down. Maybe if I added some like wildfires and Trump is president, then they would finally fucking give up like the rest of us. Over here, we have Mo's house. Mo, on the other hand, is allowed out of house arrest. He is just like a cute little cat. He kind of reminds me of a toddler, or, like a little baby. If we circle down here through this awkward placement of trees, I created a little, what would you call this? like a peninsula, I guess. I worked really hard to get this super symmetrical, um, and so I think it looks quite aesthetically pleasing, if I may say so myself. I'm running out of fun ways to describe my island. Doo -doo -doo. This is like half the experience of Animal Crossing, just like kind of waiting for your character to run faster across the island. Across this bridge, I created, well, I was gonna say I created an orchard. I feel like it's kind of a generous way to describe this. Um, it's pretty much just a depository for a bunch of fruit trees. I created some little stands though. So maybe if you were getting creative, you could imagine it was like one of those pick your own fruit orchards. I don't know, I'm, I, that's really a stretch. Over here we have Rold's house. Rold is an absolute cutie. Something about his blank ass stare is so adorable to me. Unfortunately though, Rold is like a fitness type character. So he just always talks about like biceps and working out and it kind of reminds me of my ex. So I don't really like talking to him, but I like looking at him, which also reminds me of my ex. I didn't say that. That was a joke, sorry. <laughs> You guys say that I have a lot of plants in my actual apartment, but oh baby, my apartment is nothing compared to this field. Every so often when I need a certain color flower, I'll just dig it out of this patch, patch the hole back up, and then in a couple days there'll be a new flower that bred there, and so I just kind of have an infinite supply of plants. Past this absolute pollen fest, we have Roscoe's house. Roscoe's one of my favorite characters. He kind of reminds me of Bojack in that he's this like old, grumpy, curmudgeonly horse. In order to match Roscoe's kind of gothic theme, I planted all of these black flowers around him. And next door we have Ken. I feel like super neutral about him. Um, I guess he's fine. Honestly, I don't really talk to my Animal Crossing characters that much. Like, 
I'll get really attached to one or two, but then the rest of them, I just kind of like <laughs> run away. You know when some of the villagers have like something to tell you and they say, oh my gosh, hi, and they start like running after you around town. Honestly, I think that is the origin of my social anxiety because <laughs> I just like run away from them and keep running until they stop talking to me. Back across the flower field, this is where Cookie and Gale live. From the outside, they're both just like super normal, sweet, pink characters. Except I have this secret theory that Cookie is like in the mafia or something. She is normally just like so sweet. She talks about fashion school. She talks about wanting to be a pop star. And then occasionally she hits you with a, I'm going to fashion school, or at least that's what I'm saying for tax purposes. Damn, Cookie, girl, girl knows how to work a tax code, I guess. So I made this little hidden mountain in the back, which is honestly like obscenely hard to get to. I think I've done a little bit too good of a job of hiding it. But I made a little secret spa area and there's a go board so we can play games, you know, skinny dip, just me and Sherb. <laughs> if you go around this side, there's also a telescope. Um, so you have a great view of the island and you can watch the stars. So yeah, that is my Animal Crossing island. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope this proved to you that all Animal Crossing islands are beautiful and you don't need to compare your Animal Crossing islands to the unrealistic Instagram standards of Animal Crossing islands. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.